In this video, I'm going to continue discussing Active Directory, specifically managing accounts, also to make us understand what an account really is. Afterwards, we will discuss how to copy accounts and templates. After that, we will go through user rights and then we will go ahead to computer accounts and end with disabling and enabling accounts. So first of all, let's define what an account really is, particularly its security identity. It is a security identifier and it's commonly abbreviated as SID. There is this common fallacy that new people in Active Directory sometimes make and might do. Like if I go to the user accounts, then I choose a staff one, and I right click on them and I accidentally delete that account, which happens to be a very important account. So you'd probably create another user which is identical with the one that you accidentally deleted, but that's not really a good idea because even though you created the same account name with the same information as the one you deleted accidentally, it actually has a different SID. A security identifier or SID is a unique variable length that is used to identify a security principle or a security group in Windows operating systems. Think of it as fingerprints of a computer object. Let me show you an example. Try to run PowerShell as an administrator and then run the utility called AdC Edit. And if you're not able to connect to your domain, just right click on AdC Edit and then choose Connect To. Then try to look for a user under your domain. In my case, I'll just use staff1 under Hoyt users. Then look at its properties and observe the last three numbers on the object SID and try to remember it. After that, go back to your server manager and then select Tools, then choose Active Directory Administrative Center, then delete the user account that you chose. After that, try to recreate an identical user account with the one that you deleted. Then take a look at the properties of the user that you created. You should notice that the object SID is different from the SID since the computer, permissions, and many more really looks at the SID and even if it looks exactly the same as the user that you deleted, the SID is different. So the system will see this as a completely different user. So now let's move on to creating accounts manually. You can create an account using Active Directory Administrative Center. You can find it under Tools in your Server Manager. Right click on your domain, choose New, and then choose User. Then fill out all the necessary information and then click OK. You can also create a user account using Active Directory Users and Computers. It can be found under Tools in the Server Manager. You can just right click on the domain or the organizational unit that you want to put the user account in. Choose New, then Users, then fill out the necessary information, then click OK. Now let's move on to copying accounts and creating templates, which is very important for a productive administrator. Now I have here three users that I've put in a group named Hoyt Users, and I'm going to show you the convenience of copying an account. So I'm just going to right click on Staff 1, and then select Copy then fill out the necessary information, then add a password, and click finish. Now if you look at the properties of the account that you've just created, you'll notice that it's already part of the Hoyt users group. It even copied the department that staff1 is in. The reason why we want to copy an account is to take the exact same properties of an account and use it for the other accounts, which makes the process more simpler than creating accounts from scratch which means that we can use Staff1 as a template for creating the new accounts. Now let's move on to user rights. We can do that based upon group membership of a certain account and the membership may give them the additional user rights. To do that, you need to go to Active Directory Users and Computers, choose a specific user, then right click, choose the properties, click on Member of, click Add, and then choose the type of membership you want the user to be part of, and then click OK. But if you just want to apply user rights to a local setting, you can just run PowerShell as an administrator, and then enter gpedit.msc, then inside the computer configuration, click on Windows Settings, Security Settings, and then Local Policies, and then click on User Rights Assignment. Then you can just choose the local policy that you want to add it to, and then click add additional user. 
enter the necessary information and then click OK. Now let's go to creating computer accounts. It's also called pre-staging, particularly when you place a computer in a specific organizational unit. For example, if you have a Windows 8 client, which is a standalone computer, then choose an organizational unit or create a new one and then create the account in advance before it joins the domain. Right click on the selected organizational unit and then choose new, then select computer, then type the name of the computer, then click OK. The next thing you would do then is go back to the client and then join to the domain. Go to the control panel, then go to system and security, choose see the name of this computer, then click on change settings, click on change, and then type in the name of your domain, then click OK. Then enter administrator credentials, and then it will prompt you to restart your computer. Click on restart now. Now to join a domain offline, you're gonna need to prepare a cryptographic text file by running this command in your command prompt. The join forward slash provision forward slash domain, then the name of the domain, then forward slash machine, and the name of your machine, and then forward slash save file, and then the path to the file. By the way, the name of my file is file.txt, which makes it easy to find. Then press enter. After that, copy the output file to the client computer, and then run this command from your client computer using cmd. D join forward slash request odj forward slash load file, and then the path to the file forward slash windows path, then system root, which points to the location of the server, and then forward slash local OS. Restart the computer and then reconnect it to the network, and then you'll see that it's joined to the network. Then finally, we're gonna go to disabling and enabling accounts. To easily find accounts, like inactive and disabled accounts, you're gonna need to go to Active Directory Administrative Center. Then select the organizational unit that you want to filter or search in. Then click on the search under this node on the right side of the screen. Then add the criteria for your filter using the expand button up top. Then click add criteria. Then choose from the criteria. For example, users that haven't logged on for a certain number of days, then select the number of days, then click search. After that, you will be shown the users that haven't logged on for the number of days that you specified, then you can select the users that you want to disable, delete, or move, or etc. And that ends our discussion about managing accounts, and I hope you've learned much in this video. For more videos, check out this link right here.